everyone, Trout Flies here. I'm on the middle Provo again this week. Last week was too much fun, couldn't stay away. I'm on a different section, that fish is a little bit different than where I was last week. But I got a great request from Logan who wanted me to go over my decision making and fly selection. So I might focus a bit on that today. Let's get started. So usually when I'm walking to the first spot I intend to fish, I try and just identify what insects I see out. Making like the 10 minute or so walk to the spot, I noticed that is caddis and midges. So on my indicator rig, I've tied on a caddis and a midge and I do expect there to be PMDs out also. So on my Euro rig, I've got my heavy caddis nymph and then I've got a paradigm up above. So hopefully that covers the caddis and the mayflies. I'm going to start by Euro nymphing this little run, but it also looks like it'd be a pretty good spot just to hover an indicator over. So let's get started. Also, I look, when I get to my uh, first spot, I look for any surface activity, see if there's heads. That might be a clue to tie on, you know, some sort of caddis early, because dry, fly, dry flies are always fun. But I'm going to start by your own thing, this little drop. There's a dead fish in the water here. Looks like a trout, kind of sad. Remember to keep the fish wet. Try not, try to handle them as little as possible. So here's what I have tied on on my indicator rig. Just a tan size 14 caddis and my TF Midge. This little guy took the midge. You can see the midge in his mouth.
All right, so I'm not quite sure what I did to have this fish go downstream on me here. But I think I still got it on. I do. Let's see if I can land him in here. It's a nice fish. It's not giant though. I probably got him fouled. That would be my guess at least. Just trying to work my way down here. See if I can land him in this little spot. I do have him fouled, that's why he's went downstream on me. Right in the we're in the fin. It's a decent fish. Bummer I had him fouled. But there he is. Alright, let's let this guy go. There he goes. He went for a ride. That's for sure. This one's going downstream on me too. I feel like I got him in the mouth though. Where's my net? Come on. Another nice brown trout. So, bringing them up to a place I can handle them. Put them back in the water here. Okay. This guy took the caddis. Chunky fish. Here's one on the caddis with my Euro setup. Right in the top of the mouth, right where you want it. Look at that. Green caddis right in its mouth. Not a bad fish. So it's probably about 10.30 or so. I've started to see some PMDs coming off, so I'm tying on a PMD emerger. I've seen like three or four, and I feel like that's enough to start getting the trout's attention. So that's why I've 
I've taken off my midge and put on a PMD merger, even though I've been catching fish on the midge, I just feel like it's time to switch because it, the hatch is probably like right at the beginning. So might as well be prepared for when they start coming off thick. So that's why I've made this fly selection switch. took the PMD emerger, so. It's a pretty good case of proving why you shouldn't be afraid to switch flies, even if you have been catching fish on the fly you switch out of. If you start to see a hatch happening, you got to adapt to it. And here we got a nice white fish. Okay, he's going to have to go upside down, I think. There we go, now he'll cooperate. Whitey. So you gotta trust what you see. If you see certain insects coming off and you know it's that time of year that trout like to key in on them. It's okay to sw sw switch out of flies that were previously catching you fish. Came off at the net, that was a nice one too. They're definitely loaded up in here. This one's fighting like a white fish. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Yep, big whitey. So you can get him into the softer water. Keep side pressure on him. Oh, 
Oh, he popped off too. Fact. Well, didn't have to unhook him. That was a nice white fish though. Probably playing these fish a little too hard. There's just so much junk in the water around here. I don't want him to get caught up and stuff. That one took my little PMD emerger tied in a tied jig style. Oh, came right out. Yeah, so I have a little my version of a bar bar merger but this one's tied on a jig hook and a tungsten bead that's what he took decent little fish There's another one. Seems like a decent fish. If I can keep them above me here. Not the best net job, but another nice Provo brown trout. This one was on the caddis. It's a fat fish. Nice fish. Get him back in the water here. Sometimes it can be that easy. So in keeping with Logan's question about fly selection and knowing what fly to tie on, I feel like I've narrowed it down to what they're looking for, which is caddis and PMDs. I'll probably I'll keep these flies on as long as I think they're catching fish at the rate they should be. What would what I would look for for maybe changing things up is if it slows down, maybe I'd consider putting on more of an emerger style caddis as we get deeper into the afternoon when the fish might start looking for the hatching caddis. Because I've got a larval stage caddis on right now and that's what they seem to be king in on i'd also look to see if any of the bigger bugs come out like i haven't seen i've seen a few stone flies on the rocks but not in great numbers haven't seen any drakes i'm not sure if i'm early or late on those but been out here twice haven't seen them so that's pretty much just what I'm thinking in terms of fly selection right now. I feel like I've got to narrow down to what they're eating and just look for any external factors that might 
change my mind later. Nice brown trout on the PMD merger. Decent little fish here. Pretty fish too. Chunky. Feels like a pretty good one. Uh, maybe not. On the merger again. Nice little fish. Very interesting. This stonefly looks like a squala to me. Right? Look at that black egg sac at the bottom of it. Let me know in the comments if you guys think this is a squala and not like a golden stone. Nice fish. bad. Popped off right at the end, but he's in the net. Chunky little fish. Release on him. That's gonna do it for our day on the middle Provo. It was a Really, really excellent day. We caught quite a few fish and a lot of them were pretty nice. I wanted to kind of circle back to Logan's initial question about fly selection and how do I choose what flies I use. So my thought process today was that I know caddis are always out in summer. And a caddis nymph is one of my confidence flies for June, July, August, September, and October. They're always out here, especially on the Provo. And trout definitely key in on them. So I had, I tied a caddis nymph on both my Euro rig and my indicator rig. I used both tan and green. Both were working. So I was pretty much knew I was gonna have a caddis on all day just because it's one of my confidence flies and they were out, out in force really. 
And then in the mornings out here, not much else is hatching other than midges. So I usually, if I get here early enough, I just throw a midge on because I know that's what's hatching. And I feel like in that first hour or two, you can always get some on a midge. But as soon as I saw the PMD start hatching, I switched over to my buy it bar merger, both tied in a jig style and traditional style. And once I tied that on, it was pretty much lights out on both the caddis and the PMD merger. And I didn't really feel like I needed to switch flies at all the rest of the day, even though there was other stuff out like Yellowstones. I'm pretty sure I saw a squala. Let me know in the comments whether you think that was a squala. Or seen a few hoppers out. But it really was a PMD caddis type of deal today for me. So after I figured that out, I just kept fishing it because it kept working and I know it wasn't the most sophisticated analysis of fly selection, but that's that's kind of what happened for me today. If you understand like insect hatching schedules or schedules, I guess just what time of year insects tend to hatch, you can have a pretty good idea beforehand on what flies to touch to tie on, like summer's caddis, stoneflies, PMDs. Your spring or fall is gonna be midges and betas. And winter's pretty much just midges, but if you kind of know what season insects hatch in, you can make some assumptions about what bugs are out. And then you can just confirm it by what you see. I hope that was somewhat insightful. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. But if you enjoyed my video, please like it, subscribe to my channel. All the support helps. The channel has been growing pretty well lately and gives me a lot of encouragement to come out here and film. Anyways, stay safe.